We begin by importing JSON and OS. JSON lets us read slash write structured data and OS helps check the file system, which prepares us to persist transactions to disk. Next we set a file name constant so every function uses the same path when loading or saving transactions, keeping storage consistent across the app. Before we try to read data we check whether the file exists, this guards the load logic and prevents errors when the app runs the first time. If the file is missing we open it for writing to create a valid JSON container, ensuring subsequent loads have something to parse. We initialize the file with an empty list so the file holds a valid JSON array, this simplifies load, because it can always expect a list. With storage prepared, we define load as a small helper that reads and returns the stored transactions so other functions can work with current data. This one-liner opens the file and parses its JSON content into Python structures. The return list becomes our in-memory transaction store for the rest of the flow. To complement load, save, data, writes whatever list we pass it back to disk so changes persist between program runs. We overwrite the file with the provided data, using indent equals to so the JSON is human readable, this makes debugging and manual edits easier. Now we add a tiny heuristic classifier guess underscore category, text, so the app can suggest a category automatically when the user adds a transaction. We normalize the description to lowercase to make subsequent keyword checks case insensitive and reliable. We check for common food-related words first so typical dining expenses are grouped under a food category. When a food keyword matches we immediately return food, letting callers use that suggestion right away. If no food keywords matched, we look for transport-related terms so rides and fuel get classified as transport. On a transport match we return transport, continuing the chain of progressively broader checks. Next we test for income-related keywords so paychecks and deposits are recognized as income rather than expenses. If we detect income words we return income, which helps the summary distinguish earnings from spending. If none of the keyword groups match, we return miscellaneous as a safe fallback so every transaction still has a category. With helpers ready, add underscore transaction, orchestrates the interactive flow where we collect input, classify it, and persist the new record. We prompt the user for a description first because the text drives the category guess and provides a human-readable label for the record. Then we prompt for the amount and convert it to float, using positive for income and negative for expense keep sign semantics simple for summaries. We pass the description to guess underscore category to obtain an automatic suggestion, which speeds up data entry for the user. We show the suggested category so the user can see and optionally correct the classification before it's saved. We load the current transaction list so we can append the new item to the existing data rather than overwriting it. We create a simple dictionary for the transaction and append it to the list, preserving a consistent record structure for later analysis. After appending, we call save data, so the updated list is written back to disk and persists across runs. We print a short confirmation to reassure the user the entry was recorded successfully before returning to the menu. The summary function pulls the persisted data and computes overall and per category totals to give a quick financial snapshot. We start by reloading the stored transactions so the summary reflects the current saved state. If the list is empty we bail early because there's nothing to compute, which keeps output clean for fresh users. We inform the user that they need to add transactions before a meaningful summary can be shown. We return immediately to the caller to avoid running calculations on an empty dataset. When data exists we compute the overall balance by summing every transaction's amount, which gives a quick view of net funds. We print a header to separate the summary visually from previous output so the console is easy to scan. We display the computed total so the user immediately sees their net position before digging into categories. To break the total down, we create an empty dictionary that will accumulate sums keyed by each category. We iterate each transaction so we can add its amount to the running category totals. For each record we add its amount into cats, get, zero, ensures categories start at zero the first time we encounter them. We print a small header for the category breakdown so users can see where money is going at a glance. We loop over the accumulated category totals to display each pair in a readable format. Each category and its total is printed on its own line so the output is clear and scannable. 
Insights provides a tiny bit of analysis, like the largest expense, so the user gets quick, actionable observations from the data. We reload the transaction so insights reflect the latest saved state before any calculation. If there is no data we inform the user and avoid running insight logic that would produce meaningless results. A simple message explains why no insights are available yet. We return early to the menu to let the user add transactions first. We filter transactions to expenses, negative amounts, so we can focus insights on money spent rather than earned. If there are any expenses we proceed to find the single largest one, otherwise there's nothing to show. We use min on negative amounts to find the most negative value, which corresponds to the largest expense in absolute terms. We print the description and amount of that largest expense so the user can quickly identify what consumed the most money. Finally, we present a while true loop that runs the CLI menu repeatedly so the user can perform multiple actions in one session. At the start of each loop we print a header to orient the user before showing the available options. Option 1 allows adding a new transaction, which ties back to the add underscore transaction flow we defined earlier. Option 2 shows the aggregated balances in category breakdown using the summary helper. Option 3 triggers the insights function so the user can surface quick observations like the largest expense. Option 4 cleanly exits the loop and ends the program when the user is done. We read the user's menu choice as a string and use it to dispatch to the appropriate action next. If the user picks one we call add underscore transaction to capture and save a new record. If they pick two we call summary so they can review totals and category breakdowns immediately. If they pick three we call insights to compute and display quick analytical highlights from the data. If the user chooses four we run the exit branch to print a farewell and break the loop. We print a short goodbye message to indicate the program will terminate next. Break exits the while true loop and ends the interactive session, returning control to the operating system. If the input didn't match any known option we fall into this branch to notify the user and reshow the menu. We print an invalid option message so the user knows to enter one of the listed choices and the loop repeats.